All right. So thank you guys so, so much for joining us today. I am so over the top proud of you for making that step and just taking the time to hang out with us today and learn so much and let us fire you up. So we have a guest speaker and her name is Tidra Jackson. And I am going to just hand it over to her and then Jennifer will end our, our uh, webinar with some fun things and some, some good insights. So your turn, Tidra. Good evening, everyone. Can you all hear me? Okay, okay. So my name is T. Edra Knox. I actually just got married, so I'm still getting used to the name change. It's, 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 I had to pause at the T. Edra Knox part because I'm still fresh in the game, but I am super excited to be with you all tonight. And we're gonna talk about body awareness and healthy habit motivation. As I was researching this topic, I recognized that 91% of women, it's 91% of women are unhappy with their bodies. Only 5% of women actually have a body that's portrayed within the media. And 58, 58 college aged women have a desire to change something about their bodies. 58, 91, 5%. Those are staggering statistics. As I stated earlier, I'm Tiedra. This is my Mr. Knox here. Um, we have lots of wedding and engagement photos, so they will be making a, de a debut in all of my presentations going forward. Um, we live in Dallas, Texas with our dog, Quinn. Um, you know, he runs the house. We just have just so happen to pay for it. That's typically how, how it happens. And I am the founder and visionary of King's Kid. It's where we educate individuals on how God creates, covers, carries, and crowns us. So in essence, what I do is Dre drop beats and I drop jewels. I teach you how to live a crown life personally and professionally. That's what I do. That's what my passion is. Um, I thoroughly enjoy doing it. I get a kick out of doing it. That's my second win. There was a time where I did want to change something about my body. It was my eyes, my lips, and my hair. As soon as we get off this call tonight, I'm going to probably try to do a different hairstyle. I'm going to just be honest with you. But my eyes was one of the things I was teased about. I was always teased about having big eyes. My lips I was teased about that too. I was always teased about big lips and then I had a smart mouth. Um, I was always named as smart Alex. So it was always something going on with my eyes, my lips and my hair. It's not that I had a bad greater hair. It was just that I didn't personally like my hair. I didn't like it. I wasn't really comfortable with my hair. It didn't flow. It didn't have length that I wanted. Some people would say, oh, your hair is beautiful. And I'm like, oh, I'm not okay with that. I'm not cool with it. So there are things that I wanted to change on my body because those are the same things that I was teased about growing up. And we're going to talk about these things. So our goal, our goal is to really understand how our body plays a role into our overall development as far as how we move in purpose or how we not move in purpose. I want you all to be receptive, open mind, hearts and ears, active participation. If you have a question within the chat, please let me know. I can't see the chat, but if there is a question, I will leave time at the end for questions. Celebrate, I'm all about celebrating. I'm about living the crown life and celebrating. Those are my things. But celebrate the fact that you're here, you are here, celebrate the fact that you showed up for yourself, celebrate the time that you are taking to invest in doing something to help you live a crown life and execute. Now, I know if you hear me speaking, you're probably like, this is a little fireball. And yes, I am. But I'm not here to just motivate you. I'm not here to inspire you. I want to move you so much to where you get up to execute one thing, one thing. 
So as I'm talking, what's the one thing you can get up and do? What's the one thing you can execute? I don't want to just inspire. I don't want to just motivate. I don't want to just have a kumbaya party. I want you to execute. My goal is to drive change in your life. That's the purpose of living a crown life. Take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. Jim Ryan. This quote, when I saw it, I was like, this is it. This is it. This is the quote. And I love it because when we think about living, we think about our homes, we think about our apartments, you know, we think about all these different things, but we don't think about what is it like to live in your body. I'm going to just say this. You only get one. You can't rent your body. You can't go and try to resurrect somebody else's body and be their body. You only get one. So how are we taking the time to take care of our bodies? And this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some of the main body parts that I decided to focus on. I do want to make a disclaimer. If we have someone that is disabled and may not have any of these body parts, this, is, this does not in any way diminish the work that you are called and crowned to do. This is just an example or a template of a list of things that we're going to focus on tonight. But I want to put that out there and be respectful of everybody. We're going to start with your mind. Now, your mind, that's your control center for your entire body. Like your mind is the control center. It's thinking, feeling, desiring, wanting. What are you feeding your brain? What are you putting into your brain? That's very important. There are certain books I can't read anymore because that's going into my brain and I get to wondering all type of unholy stuff. I can't do that. That's not efficient to me, living a crown life. Let's talk about the ears. They're designed for us to hear. But the part that I loved about the ears is what are you listening to? But who are you listening to? We should have some type of filter mechanism, some type of discernment going on inside because every, every time somebody tell you something, that may not be for you. I've had people tell me stuff and I'm like, that ain't for me, that's for you. And you just pushing that on me. And I really had to take the time to block it out. So not what, not just what are you listening to, but who are you listening to? There are certain times I cannot listen to certain songs. Like, Nuck If You Buck, I love that song. That is my jam. However, I can't listen to that when, I, when me and God are trying to have a conversation. I can't do that. That doesn't mix. So not what, not just what, who you're, what you're listening to, but who you're listening to is important. Your mouth. What are you eating? What are you putting in your body? And what are you speaking? What are you eating? Whatever you're eating, whatever physical food that you're eating, it's affecting your body on the inside, whether it's good or bad, indifferent. Now, I just finished eating some french fries and um, shrimp. Now, for lunch, I ate a salad. So whether I hope that it works, I hope that it's good. But what I'm saying is find a balance. Too much of any, too much of anything, whether good or bad, could really be detrimental. So find your balance. In this life, as women especially, we're told we have to be this or that. And we don't. We could be this and that. So in my salad, guess what I had? Chicken tenders. Because I can have a salad with chicken tenders. That's my this and that. So what are you putting into your body that could be affecting your body and that could be um, causing maybe something, some type of long-term health? Be careful about what you put into your body. Be careful who you put your lips on. And I'm not just talking about a drink, but what I'm saying is when you speak to people, are you speaking to lift them up or are you speaking to tear them down? Be careful about that. I have a very quick tongue. It took me a very long time to realize that this tongue will cut you in a minute. And I realized that those words were very detrimental to the actual work I was supposed to be doing, which is crowning people. You can't crown people with, with, while you're cutting them at the same time. It just doesn't work like that. So be careful about that. Heart. So what your mind is to the body, your heart is the same thing to like your circulatory system. The heart is the organ where the blood flows through the entire body. 
the blood, the blood, the blood. So what's in our DNA is the same blood that Christ shed for us. So that flows in, in through your entire body. That's the one organ that touches every aspect. When the brain stops, the body stops. When the heart stops, so does everything else. So whatever sits on the throne of your heart, that's what's flowing through your body and you're doing work with your hands and feet with whatever sits on the throne of your heart. Prime example, competition and comparison used to be something that I struggled with. I used to struggle, struggle, struggle with competition and comparison. So if competition and comparison was sitting on the throne of my heart, I'm walking in jealousy and envy. I'm doing work with my hands in jealousy and envy. So anything that's not of God that's sitting on the throne of your heart, that's the, that's the work that you're doing that in. Now our hands, I discussed that. So the strength, right? Um, you can help uplift or you can tear down. When you think about our hands, especially if um, you're in a worship setting, it, a lot of times people lift their hands and that's a form of submission. That's a form of, okay, God, I'm giving it all to you, which is amazing. But the other part I love about that is you're lifting. You're not building, you're not tearing down. So are we lifting others up with us or are we tearing them down? So quote that says, misery loves company. We don't want to do that with our hands. We want to uplift our sisters with us. So as we go up higher and higher and higher, there should be a community of sisters we're bringing with us. And feet. That's our last one. Are you walking in light, love, or hate? That's a simple question. Are you walking in light, love, and hate? And I'm going to share with you the difference. Walking light, that's a part of packing light. Recently, I had to tell my husband I'm heavy. And I know y'all are probably looking at me like, she is not heavy. But I felt the stresses and the weight of the world wearing me down. I wasn't packing light. So what is it that you're carrying that's stopping you from reaching your destiny? What is it that you're carrying that's stopping you from being crowned? What is it that you're carrying that's stopping you on this journey? Think about that. So we're going to have to take off some things so we could pack light. And for me, me and God, we just had to have a few conversations and I got a little lighter and I got a little better. The other thing, walking in light, love. In love. When we think about love, God is love. So when we're walking, when people see us, do they see him? Are they experiencing him? Are we walking in the way that he would walk? And hey, that's very simple, although this world will make it seem like it's not. But literally, are you being the opposite of what love is? Whatever love is, are you being the complete opposite of that? And if you are, then that's something that we have to just, we have to work on switching around. We have to learn, unlearn, and relearn behaviors and patterns that's not conducive to us walking in light, love, or hate. I want to pause there. Does anyone have any questions for me? No questions? Okay. So remember, I started off with this story at the beginning about how I was always teased about my lips and my eyes and even my hair. So now I don't have a desire to change it up because someone else has talked bad about me. My eyes, I don't want to change them up because now I see and experience God and the visions that he wants me to fulfill. I don't want to change up something that he created. I don't want to do that. That wasn't their problem. They had a problem with my eyes. That was a their problem. That wasn't on me. My lips. The one thing that I got teased about the most is the thing that I now get paid to do. So if I would have switched that up, not to say that I couldn't be as effective or as efficient, but why would I change that up? So what they meant for evil is actually for God's glory and God's good. And that's why I'm here tonight. And this is not just what I do in King's Kid. As my job, as my career in corporate America, I'm a trainer. What do trainers do? They train and they talk. So this is not something that I just do on the side. This is my life. I live it. I be it. I crown it every single time. And my last thing is my hair. 
I don't have a desire to change up my hair. I change up my hair because I want to, but I've learned that my hair is my crown and it would be very disrespectful of me to dishonor my crown because someone else didn't like my hair. Now it's okay if I don't like my hair because nine times out of 10, I probably did it. So that's okay if I don't like my hair. But if you don't like my hair, that's a you problem. That's not a Tiedra problem. That's not on me to manage. That's not on me to do or anything like that. So now I honor my crown and I wear my crown. And I promise you all, when I get off this call and after I ask questions, I'm going to go switch it up. I already have the style in mind. But that's not because someone teased me. That's because it's time for a new do. And I'm doing that at my will. So it's a difference than when you want to change something because it's you and or when you've given someone else the power to bully you or to mistreat you. And then you want to change things up to please them. That's two different things. Tonight, we're talking about we're changing it up because we want to be aware of our bodies and we want to live healthy lives, but most importantly, a crown life. And this is my last slide, I think. So I really appreciate you all taking the, taking the time to be with us tonight. But I also appreciate you all showing up for you. And most importantly, I appreciate you all for having me. One thing that I want to do for you all is invite you to my Return to Rain Masterclass. So this is a class where we'll discover our gifts dethrone limiting beliefs and dominate in every area of your life. Tonight was only a snippet of what's to come. This is a four-week masterclass. And for your group specifically, um, this is not on my blog or anything, but for your group specifically, I have made a discount to where it will be $40. So I can share the link um, later on tonight. But this is an invite for you all. If you don't want to attend a master class, that's fine. You can get crowned with me on the blog at www.kingskid.com. And it's K-I-N-G-S-K-I-D.com. And that is all I have for you all tonight. Does anyone have any questions for me? Let me stop sharing so I can see everybody. We don't have any questions? Okay, just in case if y'all think of something, I'm gonna stay on the line. How about that? Well, yeah, you can't leave us. <laughs> okay, you have to stay. Okay, so <laughs> you anything else and nobody has any questions for her? No? Okay. All right. We will hand it over to Jennifer. There we go. Myself here. There we go. Hello, ladies. How are you doing? Well, my name is Jennifer. Uh, most of you know me. I'm one of your trainers, but I'm also an author and the owner of Sabuni, which is a sustainable wellness pro uh, product. I make my own lotions, my own soaps and everything. Um, next year, I have a makeup line coming out. But as of now, this summer, we are launching all the soaps. We're hoping to do it in the spring, but you can see behind me over there, there's like a stack of soap and all the stuff. Um, just line up behind me and my little baking rack that has all my soaps and I'm excited because when I get off here I'm going to go cut some soaps I made and just like sit there and sniff and smell but um, through the process of making soap I realized we the one thing that we wash the most is our body mm -hmm. we think about soap to make us clean on the outside now, today, I want you to think about the soap that will clean you on the inside. So many times we think of people where I want to cut these people off. I want to do these things. I want to do all that. In life, in order for us to be successful, and I'm not just talking about successful, making money, building businesses, writing books, and just living lives that are less burdensome. We need to set boundaries because I think so many of us live life so casually. 
we forget to set boundaries. Boundaries are very important because they protect us. When God decided to give us rules, those were boundaries. So if you have, if you printed your little paper, there are some blanks that I would like for you to fill out with me. And whoever is able to fill out the little blanks, as many as you can. And if you can send it by tomorrow afternoon, you actually get a prize. So, and if you did not print or were not able to print your paper, if we send you the video and you can get your paper to us by the end of the week, you still get a prize. It won't be as glorious, it won't be the first prize, but it would be a prize. So now, setting boundaries. What are boundaries? Boundaries basically are parameters or standards that we establish to indicate ourselves to ourselves and the people around us what lines to cross and what not to cross, okay? Boundaries are parameters or standards we establish to indicate to others what what lines to cross and what lines not to cross. There are thresholds for our well being. And boundaries are also indicators that we ourselves treat who we are with a certain level of respect and esteem. You know, people, they say, people do to you what you let them do to you. That's because we don't have boundaries. Because boundaries tell people, oh my goodness, look at her. She, she doesn't let people talk to her like that. Oh, I don't think you can get away with that as far as he or she is concerned. Those are boundaries. What boundaries are we setting so people know and understand how to treat us? Because when we establish boundaries, there is a certain burden that we are lifting from ourselves. And we no longer have to go in our bedroom and cry because so-and-so talked to me and he talked so bad to me. And she said that, but if you nipped it in the bud from the first time and said, listen, I understand you're upset. I understand this happened, but I don't ever want you to talk to me in that manner again. Boundary also help you determine who respects you, who cares for you, and who is just like, uh, sorry, I'll do what I want to do. Then you know those are the people we need to cut out of the way so we can make it where we need to go. Because life already is promised trouble. If we don't set boundaries, we are inviting more trouble into our lives. And that is not necessary, y'all. God already promised in this life, we will have trouble. So you tell me, God has already made you, promising you to have trouble. And you're like, yeah, I think I want more of that, God. Go ahead, send me more of that. No, honey, you ain't going to make it. You'll be stressed, you'll be mad, and then there's nobody to blame but you because you know you should have set some boundaries and you did not. We can do better. Our bodies, they are our temple. We live in this body. Somebody one time asked me, oh my goodness, why is it that you just, uh, like when we go out, girls, you know, every woman wants to be touched. Every woman wants the love of a man, but you need to set some rules and some boundaries. Think of your body as the white house. They don't just let anybody and everybody in the White House or even on the lawn of the White House, okay? So why are you just having all these hoodlums walking up and down your lawn like, no, no, I'm sorry. Can we please, ladies, stop doing that? Why is it that you can, he just wanted to give you a hug. Girl, he wanted to do more than a hug. You do not give somebody a hug with your hand close to my butt. No, no, boo, no, boo, boo. Mm -mm, we're not doing that. We are not doing that. Boundaries, boundaries. But most importantly, boundaries on how we treat ourselves. 
ladies, I had a friend who lately, actually it was Tali that told me the way we talk to ourselves, would we talk to children like that? And it had me thinking, that is true. The way we treat ourselves, if we were five years old, 10 years old, would we talk to ourselves in that manner? Boundaries. Don't be any harder on yourself than life already is on you, baby girl. Boundaries. How do you speak to you? How do you speak about you? Because that reveals your state of mind. You may not think it, you may cover it up, but if I ask you how you are and you tell me, I just hate my arms. I just hate my legs. I just hate my this and my that. We're not perfect. God created us imperfect for a reason because he wants us to keep going back and asking him to show us a new way to keep loving ourselves and others. It's okay not to like your, your arms or your leg, but it's not okay for you to torture yourself over it. It's not just, it's not your job to fix you. That's why we have God. Allow God to work in you. Allow God to refine you. Allow God to strip everything that does not belong in you so he can reformat you. He can recondition you. But you have to surrender your mind. Because so many of us have surrendered everything else to God, but we retained our mind. But the Bible says we are renewed by what? Do not be, do not conform to this world, but be he transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So you can change your, your dress, you can change your house, you can remodel your house, you can buy a new house, buy a new. If your mind is not back to where it needs to be so you can be the woman that you dream of every day, it will be harder to get there. It will be so much harder to get there because what is coming out of your mouth is canceling what the universe is trying to do for you. God created everything with his mouth. Everything with his mouth. He said, let there be. There's no discussion there is no if, mays, and buts in it. He said, let there be. The next thing is, and there was. Let there be, and there was. And then God created man and woman and gave them the same power to create their world through the power of their mouth. But every time we speak of ourselves, it's in a negative If you don't like what you get, change what you're asking for. The word that comes out of our mouth is a testimony and a reflection of our views and mindset toward ourselves. Think of your mind as a soil, right? Think of your mind as a soil. Sorry, ladies, I'm skipping a little bit toward the end. Our essence. Basically, who we are has essence. And our, our essence is the gift that God has given to this earth to release an harmonious aroma in order for his presence to walk on this planet. So if we were not here, God would have no business being here. Our essence, which is a very reason for being, a very nature itself is a seed. A very nature is a seed to God. The universe 
is the soil where we plant that seed. What essence are you planting in the universe? Because God's grace waters that essence. And then the universe springs out the seed from that essence. Now, if you are planting self-doubt, you are planting self-hatred, you are planting, I'm just not good enough. I'm just, you will never be good enough. God created us enough so we can keep going back to him. You will never be enough of everything. You can know everything. You can be everything. In that aspect, you will never be enough. But God made you enough to be able to release his aroma every day when you wake up, to be able to walk on this earth and release the essence of who you are as the very testimony of the creator that decided, you know what, this is a precious jewel. I want to represent me. This is the precious jewel I am going to live through, love through. And so he gave us a body, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, arms, legs, fingers, and everything in between. So let's look at our body just for a minute. I hate my head. It's shaped weirdly. Well, that is absolutely fine because somebody's looking at your head thinking, dang, I wish I had a head because my head is shaped this way. Somebody looking at your mouth thinking, oh boy, I love Deidre's lips. Look at that, pink is popping. Deidre's like, I hate my lips. I'm like, man, I love Tylee's hair. Her hair just moves and just has those, just like the wave of the sea. Like, well, I hate my, whatever you hate on you, there's somebody out there that's looking at you thinking, I would kill to have her fill the blank. Your head harbors the eyes that shine love through the essence that God has imparted in you. And your smile lifts burdens like you could never imagine. There is somebody today that walked past you and had a bad day, but they saw your essence through the smile that you gave them. And they were like, oh man, oh, I feel a little bit better. Somebody smiled at me today. Your mind has crafted the greatest plans that has fostered safety for little ones. All of you here are or will be mothers someday. And a mind is going to create an atmosphere that would put those children at ease, that will put your spouse, your partners at ease, knowing that, you know what? I can trust her because she always comes up with solutions. I can trust her because when I feel like this, I can call her, I can text her, and she, she got it. She got me. Your mind allows you to do that, to put another human being at ease, to put another essence back in its nature so it can release the sweet aroma of God. Your shoulders have hosted another head streaming in tears because they could not find anybody else that will allow them to put their head, their teary head on their shoulder. And you're probably wearing your favorite shirt that day and you were like, dang it, she cried all over my shirt. But when she went home or he went home, he was like, man, I sure I'm glad Lisa was there because man, she, she made me feel so much better. Your arms have hugged the heaviest heart and made some boo-boos go away. Leslie, every time Grayson is crying and you hug him, my gosh, you don't even know what kind of seed you've just left into that little boy. Chanel, your fingers probably put band-aids on little Grayson. Mama, boo-boo, boo-boo, mama, boo-boo. Your fingers allow you to do that, for him to be able to see your love through you making time to use your fingers to put a bandaid on him. 
I hate my fingers, the fat fingers, the short fingers, the long fingers, the skinny fingers. Who cares your fingers work? Your hands have cooked some of the greatest meals. Some of the greatest meals. Lori, your hands went and bought a bottle of wine for somebody that was just like, man, Lori got me some wine. I was having a hard day and look at this. I'm about to sit on this couch with a nice movie and sip a glass of wine. And your breasts have fed the greatest souls, the souls of the future leaders of this world. Kathy, I can only imagine the stories your children will tell their own children. They're like, man, I can't remember when my mom used to breastfeed me, but I sure I'm grateful for it. I sure I'm grateful for it. Bellies. Your bellies have carried the greatest souls that you may encounter. Casey, I don't know you. Oh, look at that. Is that your child? See, that little girl right there lived inside your belly for nine months, rent free, girl, rent free. And you're probably like, dang, my back hurts, my hips. The last nine months, the, the, the last month, you know, nine months, you're probably like, I'm uncomfortable. I can't find a position to sit or sleep. And you had to go to the bathroom every hour. And she was in there baking like, ooh, it's so nice and toasty in here. Ooh, rent free. And look at her. You're enjoying her now, aren't you? Look at that. You're just hugging her. She's probably the best thing that's ever happened in your life. And you, look at you. You guys look so beautiful. And your hips. They're like, man, my hips are wide. I don't have hips. Girl, you got hips. Because for those of you that have babies, you know you needed your hips to be able to keep that belly up. Because I do not have hips. I, I can only imagine what you would be looking like with your big old belly just flopping around and just no support or anything. I don't know. But legs, Melissa. I just, I'm going to tell you, girl, I envy your legs. Not envy, but I admire your legs. You got gorgeous legs, okay? Gorgeous legs. And y'all, your legs have helped you walk a friend so she or he can alleviate his burden. Your legs have taken you places that you probably could not if you didn't have legs. And your legs keep you healthy because every movement you make strengthen your body even more. Paula, your calves, girl. Oh, you got some. You got some sexy calves. You got sexy calves. Yes. And your calves keep you standing, keep you strong, just like your ankles. They are part of your foundation. Your feet are the foundation that sustains your being. And they're attached to the ankle and your calves, which create the ability for us to stand strong. So be gracious with yourself. Be gracious to yourself. Once in a while, choose you. There is a quote I read yesterday and it really, 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 it, it hit me hard, I have to say. Um, because as women, we always put everybody else first, everybody before us, especially when you're a parent, you're like, you know what, my kids first, I'm not saying take your kids and put them in a back burner now, I'm just saying from time to time, you'd be like, I love you, but today is mama day, okay? Once a month, have you an international women's day? Okay, you'd be like, today, mama decided it's International Women's Day. So you're going to sit over here and I'm going to go over there and take a two-hour bath. Don't you come knocking on my door because you're not going to have problems. Set those boundaries. Your children need to understand that mama is available, but mama needs some rest too so she can keep taking care of you. Because if mama loses it, it would not be good. I can't find the quote. But basically... 
the quote said, I think it's from Michelle Obama. She said, as women, it's time for us to put ourselves at the top of our own to-do list. It's time to be at the top of our own to-do list. And you know what? If you think you are broken, that's fine because God loves broken things. And if we go through the Bible, I don't think there is a single whole person beside Jesus that God used. He's used the thief, he's used the murderer, he's used the disobedient child. Listen, make a list. And you look at the 12 apostles of Jesus, they were there. But I don't understand why God will want me because he created you before you met you. God met you before you met you. You think this is news to him that you are the way you are? No, he still loves you. And he created a tribe to love you just as much as he loves you. Ladies, it's amazing the things that we discuss on our group. And I'm just like, God, you are amazing. And you know how they always say, well, women can get together, can get along. You can put women together. And that's a lie. And our tribe has proven it. How we get on there and we just encourage each other, build each other up. It's wonderful to be able to have that tribe. And you know what? It's okay on the days where you don't feel whole, on the days where you don't feel like you want to work out, on the days where you feel like you don't want to have a coaching. Just send a message and be like, yo, it's a rough day. Can we just talk? You, you shut up and I talk. I will, I promise. I like to talk, but I also know how to shut up. If you feel like, man, I'm just... The rate of suicide is going up. Guys, I never thought so many people were thinking of taking their own lives. We are a phone call and a text message away. If we don't call you within five minutes, please call us, please. And if you call us and we're all having a bad day, we have a Zoom and sing Kumbaya with a glass of wine. This is a safe place, no judgment. No, no fear of anything because when we allow fear to enter, then the enemy comes in and he isolates. That's how it works. If he can pull you from your tribe, then you become the perfect target. He can mess up your mind. And if he messes up your mind, then he can get you to go down. And it takes even more work for you to come back up. You know, it's like your GPA. You got a 4.0, but you get one bad test. Your 4.0 goes from 4.0 to 3.3. And then you have to have six text, tests where you make 100 to get back to the 4.0. That make no sense, is it? Like, oh, why does it take so little to get bad, but so much work to make it better? But we can do it. Guys, we got each other for a reason. And we need to stop self-terrorizing because every time you start making up stories in your mind, that's terrorism. Terrorism is inflicting fear upon a person. When you are inflicting fear on yourself, you are a terrorist. Stop terrorizing yourselves. It's not worth it. Because half the time, the stories we make up don't even come true. <laughs> they don't. So be gracious. Be patient. You are a growing flower. You are a growing flower. We just need to make sure we redirect you to the sun so that photosynthesis can keep you growing can keep you going. I'm sorry. I know this is not everything on my page, but that's where I felt like we needed to go tonight because that's where we need to be. Our minds need a reset press. Broken things have value. 
the Japanese have a, a, a ritual that they call kitsugu. Kitsugu basically in Japan, when a vase or anything breaks, the Japanese will melt some gold. I will post some pictures on the group. They will melt some gold and then put the pot together. They'll put it in another vessel and they'll pour the gold. And what the gold will do, it will actually mend that thing. It will mend that thing. We are the broken vessel. Jesus is the gold. Do not be afraid of your brokenness because that's exactly how God wants us. Our brokenness is the most beautiful gift we can give to God. We always think we have to make ourselves perfect before we go see God, but God is like, yo, come to me, all who are weary, and I'll give you rest. Come to me with your brokenness because your brokenness is what I need to be able to reach somebody else. So when we delay our our transformation, when we delay our blessing, we are also delaying somebody else's blessing because there are people around us that we influence. And when they see what's happening within us, we either strengthen them or we discourage them. Granted, we can be living life fearing, oh my goodness, there are people watching me, how do I live my life? But we have to live life responsible with the essence in us, but also knowing that we are walking testimonies for God. Does that make sense? Brokenness is the opportunity to reinvent ourselves and create new avenues for us to grow, to morph into the people that we are so fearful of becoming. The value in brokenness is why the Japanese invented the kitsugu art. So don't be afraid to be a broken vessel because even broken things have value. Any questions, comments, threats? I think what you said was perfect. You know, I, I do want to uh, just kind of chime in a little bit. Um, you know, I work with a lot of women, all different types of women, all different places that they've grown up and different scenarios in their lives. But I have actually had, um, I forgot to remove that. Um, I've actually had several conversations this week with many, many women, friends, clients that are dealing with, you know, and, and we all, and they're all women, just like us. And they're dealing with major things in their life and they're, they're stressed, they're depressed, they feel alone. And, you know, the things that they're going on that are going on in their life, they can't fix that. I can't fix that. Um, we can't change it but we can be together and make a, a group um, and be there for each other. But you add that on top of the pandemic, the way the world has changed, the isolation, um, it's, it's hard. It's hard for even the healthiest mind person to deal with without a support system. So I love that Jennifer brought that up because it is important to me that I, I want all of my clients to know and anybody that listens to this video, you know, we're always here. We're always here to listen. You don't have to be a client of ours. You don't have to be, you know, paying me to train you for me to talk to you over something like that. I'm always here. Um, it's so easy for us to get stuck in that rut and to feel like we're stuck there and we can't get out. Because I've been there. I've been there. I've been through, um, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I have been through an abusive marriage. And it took a lot of, a lot of years, a lot of praying, a lot of therapy and um, working on myself to get past that. And it's important for women to understand that you can get past these, these troubled times. It takes time. It takes support. 
but you come out so much stronger, so much stronger. And, you know, my whole um, life, I kind of just depended on another person to take care of me. I've just depended on my husbands that I had and, you know, I just wanted them to take care of me. And then it just hit me one day. I was like, why do I have to depend on anyone? You know, I, you know, I want the companionship and that from a husband, but I don't want them to take care of me because I want to take care of myself. I want to be fixed and whole myself. And it's taken me all of these years to figure that out. And anyone that's trained with me, I know I've got some on here that have trained with me for 10 years, five years, have seen me go through these changes. And it's amazing what happens once you finally hit that, where you're done letting someone else dictate how you feel, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. And you just take over your life. It, it's amazing what it does for you and the people around you. So I think that that's perfect. And I, and I'm super glad we did this because I think, um, there is a lot of people that will benefit from what we've heard today. And we are planning on doing um, webinars every month and it will be geared to women's empowerment or women warrior, what was it, warrior wellness women. And um, it's just a safe place. And we're just gonna learn together, talk together, grow together. And, you know, it just takes an hour out of our time. And instead of scrolling on Facebook, here we are. We're all here, sitting here looking at each other and enjoying this time. So if, does anyone else have any questions? Man, everybody's so quiet today. <laughs> Paula, yeah. I would just like to say that um, I needed this morning, even though I had to bug out early, and I needed this tonight. I knew that you did, and I was very excited when I saw that you signed up, because I, I you know, and I, I'm always there as a wellness coach, too, um, for my clients. But it's nice to have everyone and to hear other other support systems help us through this. So I knew, and it's crazy. I just said this today because you're not the first person that said that this morning you needed that. It's been like that all day long. Every client I've had is like, I've needed this. You know, it was a horrible day. And it's amazing to me just how, you know, even just doing Pilates and the breathing and the and the exercise and relaxing and just being around the tribe, what it can do, because it does it for me too. And, and, you know, and I've said it over and over. I don't know if I would be the person I am today if I didn't have the tribe I have. I think that, you know, through the years, you guys have, have helped me just as much as I help you. So, and we become friends. And Kathy, you, you and Lori have been with me long enough, well, and Kara have been with me long enough to know that I, Oh, and Lisa too. You know, we've been through a lot together, a lot. And we've all made it through it. And look how much better we are today. How much better we are tonight. I'm just, I'm super proud of everyone. I know that it is going to be a struggle after struggle after struggle, but it is part of life. Mm -hmm. is, so we just always need to remember we're all there for each other. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, who has their bingo card? Just out of curiosity, how many people have their bingo card? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're going to play a game. Even if you don't have your bingo card, I want you to write the words and then you can go back to the email and see if you get a bingo out of the words that you have, as many as you can write. So I'm gonna give you guys like one minute, 30 seconds to go get something to write on. And then we'll go. Tali, do you wanna lead us in it? I'll explain the rules. Yeah, I'll call out the body parts. Okay, so basically what we do, we're gonna do is see how you relate your body and food. Like, I have a question. A part of the body. Oh, Leslie, <laughs> Leslie has a 
Yes. I have a question. Is this going to be like Friday night? No, actually, it's going to be better than Friday night. Oh, Kathy. I know, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, we had a version of this last Friday during um, Friday Couch Chat. We are going to give you um, a body part. You have to tell us or write down what food, what food you think about. Like if somebody says like leg, popsicle, because right now I really want some ice cream. I haven't had ice cream in three months. Tomorrow I'm going to brown. So whatever Tali is going to give you a food and you have, sorry, it's going to give you a body pump. You have to tell us what food. But here is the catch. <laughs> when you write that food, I'm not going to tell you. I tell you afterwards because it's going to ruin the game. <laughs> okay. So Jennifer, am I calling on a person and saying a body part, or are we? And then they'll write down their word. And how yes. does the bingo part work with it? Basically, when she calls the the word, the the the, the body part, you circle it on your card. You circle the part on your card and then you tell us what food or write on there. Actually, yeah, we have a lot of people and not much time left. So write it on there. So if she says leg and you say popsicle, circle leg if you have it and then write people at the bottom. And then um, when we don't, whoever, the first person that gets a bingo, that's the end of the game because of time purpose. And then you guys will take pictures of your bingo card once you get everything, and then you send it to us. Mm -hmm. That will tell you guys what happens afterward. Like this. Okay. So the first food that pops into your mind, you're gonna write that on that square. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. The first one is thighs. Thighs. I think I know what Kathy put. <laughs> She's laughing. Okay. All right, if you're done writing down your food, look for elbow. The next one is breast. Arms. Fingers. Head. Casey, I know those girls are helping you come up with ideas for food. <laughs> They're going to say, well, airhead, you know that candy? <laughs> All 
All right, the next one is eyes. No bingo? Okay, just a few more. How about hands? Ears. Torso. Knees. Shoulder. Forehead. Neck. Hmm, the sex one's not really a body part, but it's related to the body, your height. Height. Jennifer, is it three in a row, four in a row, a full row? What is it? I, but you get four, actually, because you get that free one in the middle. Okay. I just need one more, and I'll get a bingo. <laughs> Can I tell you which one it is? No. No. <laughs> Ankles. Come on. <laughs> Bingo. Oh. All right. All right. Finish writing your foods down and remember to take a picture and send it. Where do they send it to? They they post it on the on the on the app. Then you can just post Okay. It. Can you say next so I can get a bingo too? Just <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> I'll let you know what the next one was though. Brain. Nose. Nah, nowhere close. What, did we have a second one there? No. <laughs> All right. So, Tylee, don't forget, Casey, I don't think, is in either one of the groups. Oh, can she send it to us on Facebook? You can miss it. Well, I, I need to remember to put Casey in one of our group, in the group. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can put her, we can put her in the, the main one that I have if we want or whatever, either way. Okay. Yeah. So just don't let me forget that. And Casey, if I do, please reach out to me because I'm not trying to forget no one. I don't like that. All right. Is that all you have, Jennifer? That is what we had for today, ladies. Thank you for being here. Celebrate yourself. I want you to hug yourself and be like, girl, you did. Yes. Awesome job. Deidre. Thank you so much for coming and blessing us with your words of wisdom, your little nuggets. We appreciate you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you so much. I, I also wanted to make sure everyone that is on here um, knows about our couch chat, which is on Fridays. It's free of charge. And it's just the girls getting together, talking about the week. Yep. They have a lot of fun. They laugh and carry on for, I don't know how many hours because I have yet to get to attend one, but they, um, they all have a good time, good time. So you're always welcome to do that. And then we will reach out whenever we decide when our next webinar will be on the date and also what the topic will be. So um, look forward to that because of course, each time we do this, because this is our first one, and um, each time we do this, it's gonna get better and better. And we hope to have even more guest speakers, which is awesome because that just, that really meant a lot to me that you showed up Miss Knox to help us today. I'm gonna to try to remember that because I'm sure that we will not, this will not be the last time that we, we speak. So I wanna remember that it's Knox, not, not Jackson. <laughs> Look, I'm still getting adjusted to it too. So we're gonna give each other grace in that area. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome, and ladies, um, we will be forwarding you uh, Teardra's class web uh, link so you can sign up for her classes and also we we'll send you her uh, blog so you can be blessed by all the little nuggets that she has on there she has different um, material that you can download that you can buy some of them and uh, just enjoy getting the nuggets of wisdom and uh, be blessed yes Thank you guys all so, so, so much. Go enjoy your evening with your family or while you're watching your shows. I know I'm going to.